Minutes of the Meek, where we watch made-for-TV movies and miniseries so you don't have to. From Gia to Xenon, Hysteria to Sybil, welcome to Movies of the Meek. This week we watched like two, Lassie Come Home. Um, it is about uh, two, I think, former private detectives who were kind of pulled out of retirement, I guess, to help solve um, a mystery surrounding uh, the recent shooting of their friend and former boss, um, Lassiter, Carlton Lassiter, um, who was the police chief uh in Santa Barbara. Uh, so they go back home and um, they're trying to figure out why uh, he's seeing weird things as he's recovering from the shooting. Um, it's a very funny movie, <laughs> a very engaging movie. Um, definitely, you definitely do not need uh, to have watched the series to know what was going on. All, all eight seasons. It doesn't, it, it doesn't just assume... That you've uh, you know these characters, <laughs> it does. I I was I was very confused the first uh, twenty thirty minutes because um, they really don't do any setup at all. Like it, it kind of starts and then uh, and then they're just there, yeah, doing it. They're just doing the episode. This is really just a one long episode. This is how it like the the pacing felt to me anyway. Yeah. Um, where should we start, Max? I've uh, more notes than usual <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> like, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I guess I should start by saying I originally wanted to watch Phantom Thread on Peacock instead of this movie. So I, I took that going into it. <laughs> and I also realized that I had expectations coming in to this movie. Okay. I think unfair expectations. Um, I didn't really know what this show was about. I assumed that, originally assumed that they both had some sort of power. Um, it's called psych. I don't know. I was like, well, maybe one of them can read minds and the other one does something else. Um, and that's kind of true, right? They, they do have special abilities. Kind, we'll get into that because I, I have a whole issue with Sean has a photographic memory. Yes, he's yeah, exactly. So if we want to consider that an ability, then sure. An ability that the majority of people don't have. Yes. Okay, I think. Like, I don't have that. You, do you have that? I do not have that. Okay. I don't have that. I wish I did. It <laughs> seems like it would come in handy. Gus, his best friend and partner, <laughs> I have been told by many, by different people that he does have abilities. <laughs> He's very smart, people say. People say he's um, he can occasionally smell things better than most people. Yes. But only when it's convenient. Yes. And I really want to know more about that because that, that doesn't make any sense to me. And in the case of this film, it was only convenient an hour and 15 minutes into it. For 10 seconds. <laughs> I guess let's... Maybe we just start talking about their abilities. Cause I, <laughs> I, it has really bugged me. Okay, oh, yeah. so he he can smell things better than most people. Yes. Right. Okay. It, now I've been told by um, my friend, who's a big psych fan, that he can smell. It's more. It's less. He can smell better than most people. It's he can smell very specific things better than some people. Like ing- like certain uh, perfumes or ingredients in perfumes or uh, like the scent of laundry or like weird shit, but it's not always applicable to the the situation they're in, which is why maybe they don't use it as often as I think they should. In this movie, like you just said, they only use it once, an hour into the movie. Yeah, and it's it, it's uh, he smells peroxide. <laughs> Which is something that I feel like most human beings would smell. <laughs> it's a very strong smell. And they ha- and what's fucked up about this movie is that they have other scenes earlier on where they're where they need to smell something, <laughs> right? They're trying to track things. And and I going into this movie I thought that Gus had that ability, but he doesn't really, because they bring a dog with them yeah. to track. 
Can you make any sense of this? Is this is this like something that's been established throughout the series of Psych? Like he's not he has this ability sometimes. I don't understand. I only watched maybe half of the first season. So my <laughs> Were there like eight seasons? <laughs> the extent of my psych knowledge I, is unfortunately rather limited. A half a okay. I thought you watched half of this of the series. Of the se- no, yeah. unfortunately. Um, okay. I have, of course, watched on YouTube the S- Super Sniffer compilation to see the extent of his you powers. That. That's, <laughs> so that's part of the reason why I came in with these expectations. I was like, this guy can smell. <laughs> he can smell good. <laughs> he can smell real good, dude. He's smelling everything. And, and that compilation of clips shows within the canon of the show that he can be used as a bloodhound to smell one smell and track it down on a person. Yes. So within the canon of the show, that has happened. They just don't use it often. Why? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand. Like if I Probably was making this show, they found out that's mildly offensive. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know. Then give him a different ability. I, it's just like, like I feel like they use Sean's abilities way more frequently. In this movie, and I was would assume in the in the series too, they, they use his ability like he is the he's the one that's kind of pushing the plot along every episode because uh, he's all right. Let's also get into Sean's abilities because sometimes okay. it doesn't seem like it's actually anything. Because for for example, very often it'll be him looking at a bunch of numbers or a bunch of words and then it'll highlight them in a a beautiful glowing font (laughs) where there's another scenario within this film where a guy is clearly threatening Sean with a knife he brandishes Mm -hmm. it to to, to, he does an ocular pat down to, to show Sean that you know he is willing to threaten him with this knife and then Sean's, we'll call it psych vision, <laughs> zooms in on it and highlights it. And I just, th- there's no bearing on the plot that that sequence had. It was just showing us, oh, he has a knife. In which case, okay, I saw that from the motions that he was giving. Yeah, we, like, we, we as the audience, anyone could see the knife. <laughs> yeah. he, he shows off the knife. It'd be more interesting if he could somehow see through the guy's jacket or pants and see the knife. Yes. It just seems like I don't I just don't understand the purpose of their abilities, really. Um, and in this movie, Sean so he does there's that scene where he, he spots the knife that everyone could see. <laughs> and there's another scene where they, they're looking at their big clue board and he's like standing a reasonable distance away, like a distance maybe that I couldn't read the board, but Someone with psych powers can apparently read small print from a reasonable distance away. And then he just reads, and then the words come off the board, and they fly around him, and he puts clues together. And is that in the show, too? Does he, Is that something that happens yes. sometimes? Okay. I don't know. I, I get I. I thought that the powers, I thought they had powers, I guess, which is my problem, and I thought that they were going to be used way more frequently, and they're and they're way more integral to the, the actual characters, but they're not. They're just like throwaway goofs that they throw in occasionally and so, to make things so interesting. So this is something that gets into, at least in my opinion, a huge issue within the whole foundation of this show, because he marries one of the detectives. He's married to her. They're married? Yes. That is now okay. his wife. Okay. In this movie. The, when did that yes. happen? Like during the show at some point? Yeah. So Anything like. Happen? Okay. So my question is, does he let her know that he's not really psychic and all of this has been a lie? Is that a thing? In, like, is he. Because. Do people think he's psychic? They have a psych agency and that's the thing. They're not actually detectives. They're working as subcontractors working with a detective agency. But people think he's an actual psychic. But people think he's an actual psychic, and they hire him based upon the fact that he is a psychic, when in actuality, he is just a person with a photographic memory that is willing to conjecture based upon his photographic memory. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, it never really comes up. I mean, to be fair, like, they don't... 
they don't really go into their relationship at all in this movie. Um, uh, I didn't. So okay. So everyone th- during the the run of the show, people just think he's a psychic. Yes. Like everyone, like all the police. Uh, Lassie thinks he's a psychic too. Yes. Or does he know? Wow. And I've also found out by doing some research that I could have just watched the show. Or watched some episodes <laughs> of the show, but um, his father trains him to do some of these things. Like he obviously has some ability, you know, his photographic memory, but his his dad teaches him some of the other tricks yes. that he uses. Yeah, was that it, was there a reason for that? Was it, it what was the reasoning behind the the goal for that child? was that his dad was a detective and wanted his son to be a detective, and so the the understanding is that he would utilize his son's photographic memory and train him to be like the greatest detective of all time. And he and, just got lucky that his son had a photographic memory. Yes, and so what ended up happening is that. His his son ends up becoming a, a slacker, and he's like, I'll never become a cop, you know, that's real mm-hmm. fucking lame, and then he ends up just working with the police force anyway, and lying in order for him to do it. But there is a tension there with his father. His father thinks he's not taking of it seriously. Of course! He, he has these gifts that he should be using to help the world, and his, that his father was trying to foster, but in fostering those powers, he really turned his son against the whole idea. Yeah. But he did it because his son's still detective. He's a subcontractor. Sub, okay, subcontractor. <laughs> but he's, he's still filling that role for the police department. Yes. Okay, so... It, <laughs> okay, sweet. <laughs> Like it'd be more interesting if it, like he was using like does the show start in a way where he's using the powers to con people or like do bad things or uh, yeah he he is okay. he is definitely not using it for the best reasons like he goes to like parties and like tricks people and does stupid shit yeah. okay okay cool we don't get any of that in this movie no and again there is the huge question whether or not he is lying to his wife because that becomes a huge uh a point of contention within the film where there's this whole narrative of, you know, I can't just keep lying to her that I'm not taking cases when I'm actually taking cases. Heaven forbid I continue lying to my wife. And it's like, is your entire marriage a lie? I would love to know whether or not you have started this marriage on the foundation that you're a uh, psychic when in actuality you have no mystical abilities. Yeah. No mystical abilities. And in this movie, um, there is a bit of tension uh, because they're they're both lying to each other about helping Lassie. Yeah, like they're both kind of sneaking around because they I guess they came to some agreement in a former movie or episode <laughs> that they're not going to do this anymore. Like they're not going to sneak around and try to solve mysteries. Yeah. Uh, but they're both doing it. But she's a cop, right? Yes. So she should be doing that. But that's not her department, I guess. Yeah. Like she's in San Francisco, she should be in San Francisco. Yeah. What is... And, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, this whole case that they're on... Mm. Yeah. It, it. This is a very interesting situation just because... Is it? <laughs> the weight with which they act on it would imply that this is something that has been building and developing for multiple years the Mm -hmm. fact that Lassiter had been shot Mm -hmm. and when the entire story pays off at the end the weight with which they act out those scenes it's as if it's the craziest thing that's ever happened and again made me feel like I had missed decades of storyline building to Mm -hmm. this moment Mm -hmm. When in actuality, us finding out that he got shot happens at the beginning of the movie for regular viewers of the show as well. And so this isn't a storyline that had been happening for multiple years. It was just there. And that gets into this weird thing involving paratext and text where the paratext is everything surrounding this film. So it's the promotional material as well as interviews and stuff like that. And so the narrative of this film surrounding it 
is that he had a stroke in real life. Yes, I found that out this morning. And so because of that, they had his character also end up suffer a stroke. Yeah. And so the victory that the character experiences is also one that he experienced in his mm-hmm. actual life. Yes. And s- and so it gets into this difficult situation where depending on how you feel about that type of stuff, I I for one don't think that outside material should change how I feel about the material itself. I agree. I think uh, they, I, while it's it's neat. So they had a. This is the second. This is part two. This is the second movie. <laughs> um, we're starting at the the part two instead of part one. Um, the in the other movie, uh, whatever it was called, it's like the movie. Um, he wasn't in it because I guess in his personal life he was having these health issues. Yeah. Um, so it's almost as if they wrote this movie. Not for him, but maybe they, they tailor the plot around his own personal life. Yeah. Which is like, it, it didn't serve the show, I don't think. I feel like it it's like it was awesome that they were able to do it and, and make it work, you know, considering he had some health issues and all that. And, and like the end of the movie, you know, was him like walking. I was like, this is kind of cool, you know. But it it did feel like we just picked up in a story that, had been going on like i thought at the beginning of this movie that he had gotten shot during the series at some point same or so like it, it was like a flashback to an earlier episode but that's not what happened at all it was just like <laughs> he's he got shot yeah and he had a stroke he got shot and had five strokes during surgery she said yeah <laughs> something. i was like jesus christ um yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I I'm trying to think of another piece of fiction that did something similar. Like they wrote around, um, you know, actors and like things that happened to them in their personal life. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I don't think it's. I don't think it served the universe and it didn't serve the story. It just felt kind of thrown together. And, and that's the the thing is that I, I I feel that if I were a huge fan of this series and I had watched all eight seasons and I'd seen all the movies as they came out and I was paying attention to all the hot goss and psych news, then this narrative <laughs> most likely would have had a huge impact on me and I would have loved every part of it. But as a person that has seen half of a season of Psych and am now watching the second Psych movie, it it did not feel earned in any way that I felt that I could infer anything properly. I mean, do you think it? You think fans of the show felt it was earned? Like I, I don't, I can't see how anyone could feel like this was earned. I I feel like people who love the show and the characters are just glad that someone threw money at it so they could see these characters again. Yeah. But I don't think it was a very fulfilling watch, really. <laughs> I mean, I as know. as much as I agree, I like to think that some someone most likely had the experience that I think they I'm, did. I'm sure it's something they did. But <laughs> I don't know. You know, and that's so. Another thing is Sean's character. Mm-hmm is one of an individual not willing to change. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is that the the sub-narrative of this is the potential that his wife is having a baby. Yeah. Which leads... That leads to some very disturbing, <laughs> disturbing scenes. Which leads not only to the only good scene of this entire uh, short film, <laughs> as well as... Oh, please. There's a couple... There's better scenes than that, but okay. As I'll well continue. as a very strange talk that he has with his father. But, in actuality, not only does he consider himself not ready for this change... But his wife doesn't want it either. Yeah. And so the narrative that you have for the course of this show is a man that is unwilling to change in any way, shape, or form. His father's trying to get him to mature and work for the police force. 
he decides that that's not good enough for himself, and so he'll work for them, but in some sort of adjacent fashion where he gets to be his own boss. So he, yeah. he doesn't really have any sort of things that are really pushing him. And then he decides to enter a marriage that isn't challenging him in any way, shape, or form either. The prospect of change in the form of a child comes up, and again, he is reassured, don't worry, Sean, you'll never have to change in any way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, well, it, it, yeah, at the end of the movie, he, he really doesn't have to do anything. He just, he can, Gus is the one that, kind of, well, he doesn't even change, Gus gets, you know, they get engaged at the end. Which she then uh, reveals, Gus's girlfriend reveal, <laughs> reveals to him that she is still married. Yes, she's still married. And she's the one that's having the baby. Yeah. And they uh, are like, let's all live together in the same house and we'll share a lazy river in the backyard. <laughs> and they all start giggling and like jumping around and that's how the movie ends. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. And that's <laughs> all right. So at the end of a detective movie, okay, yeah. Yeah. you have the exposition dump. All right. Uh-huh. Great example of this is Knives Out real recently. Absolutely. Still need to see that, but yeah. The the exposition dump at the end of the film, the detective is walking you through all the information because the detective knows what is going on. In this movie, the detectives don't know what's going on. The exposition dump doesn't come from them. And so it feels like we're just along for a ride. It doesn't feel like Sean actually knows what he's doing, Gus knows what he's doing, Absolutely. or his yes, wife knows felt. what they're doing. Yes, I was like, these, the they're terrible detectives. <laughs> like, they, they're good at finding clues. Yes. And kind of putting it together. But you're right, the, the big reveal came from the girl from Scrubs, the, the nurse, yes. right? Or, like, the, the person who runs the rehabilitation place. Yes. Whatever it's called. Um, yeah, do they ever... They learn what happens, right? The uh, Sean and Gus eventually. Like, do they get the whole picture, or are they just, or does Lassie? Lassie's the one that discovers what's going on, and they're and they're at the other uh, at the bar, right? Yes, and and they're talking. They're talking. They're to fighting the guy. Yeah. The 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 guy's son, who really mm-hmm. is behind everything. So it ends with them not knowing what the actual conspiracy was. Yes. And they and they they learn parts of it, yeah. But in actuality, we the viewer That's know incredible. more information than they do. Yeah, that's incredible. So they don't really grow. It's just a it's a long episode of the show, right? <laughs> it, it's just like they don't. Nothing really happens. I'm I'm sure there are. I mean, I, you can tell me from your, the four episodes that you watch, <laughs> but I'm sure that there was some kind of you know broader plot line that was kind of carrying through the season but each episode might have been more contained yes um and like they might have had some little moments of growth but for the most part it's the same gus and sean at the the beginning of the next episode yes the same goofy idiots and that's what this movie's setting up is the psych three the same goofy idiots are now in back in san francisco and they're they live together, but someone on their on their street just got murdered. So now they have to use their <laughs> shitty abilities to maybe smell some things, and maybe <laughs> read some very small print, <laughs> and they might find smell, out parts of the mystery. To maybe smell something. I mean, that's kind of what the next movie is going to. I mean, I'm, I don't know. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, and I think they're committed to three other movies. So yeah. Um, I, yeah. There's a lot to talk about in this movie. I mean the. The plot, the so the, I just want to maybe we can just talk about that real quick. The the conspiracy of this movie, and correct me if I'm wrong. I kind of dozed off for the end of it a little bit. Last ten minutes. Um, the the nurse from Scrubs yes. reveals at the end to Lassie that so Lassie has been experiencing weird visions and sightings like the whole movie like he's ha- having hallucinations essentially or, or what of, people think of his dead father because this his, film oh, is really dude. all about oh my fatherhood. god dude i did not know that he i didn't connect the dots with his father until the very end of the movie 
like I didn't know that man <laughs> was his father. And I was like, oh. Until the exact moment when he's like, I got it, Dad. I'm, I'm your father. Yeah, like I'm your yeah. He's like, listen, son. <laughs> Uh, I was so confused. You have no idea. I was like, oh, okay, that. So he was hallucinating his father, and these other. Th- he wasn't hallucinating some of these other things. Um, so the the you find out at the end of the movie that the that the home he's in, uh, where he's recovering, um, is run by this terrible lady who has been and and this place is um, it's a rehabilitation center for. High-profile individuals, um, you know, criminals, uh, and other people, I guess. And she uses this hallucinogen, um, slips it into their food, and then they and it it's a hallucinogen, but it's also like a truth serum or something. And they spill the beans about whatever they're doing, yes. whatever crime they're committing. She uses that as blackmail to extort them, I guess, or. I don't really know why she's doing it. Um, at one point, she's like, well, you know, a, a girl can do this, too. Like she says something like that, yeah. like implying that, you know, women can can be evil masterminds, too. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's a reason to do this. <laughs> and uh, she – so she's doing <laughs> – so, like, I don't know what her angle was to make money. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but she that's what the whole setup is, essentially. Like, he gets – Lassie gets involved in this whole thing, and then he he gets you know obviously he gets hurt because of it. Um, and then you know you find out that all these these people that uh, Sean and Gus are chasing are kind of all tied into this this whole conspiracy. Yeah, you know they're they're all being manipulated by this woman. So yeah, they don't know obviously because at the end of the movie they are giggling because they're going to live together, but um, that that is happening. Um, so I, did I get it right? Did I? It was at the movie, or did I miss part of it? I was asking a question. That wasn't me rambling. That was a question. <laughs> yeah, that 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 indeed is the movie. Uh, awesome. And that's that's also at... let me let me reveal one of my notes that I had while watching the movie is the nurse keeps saying Gus and Sean shouldn't enable his fantasies. Knowing this show, that means she's in on it. <laughs> Good job. And guess who was right? I was really. I kept getting hung up on these phrases that would that would come up occasionally, like black jello and <laughs> silly black goose, and uh, I, I like to suck on tips and all these other that tickling scene. Mm, yeah, you want to talk about it? Was very, very strange. Yeah, so he, he uh, the guy, okay, the guy in the chair, can you explain to me what his motivations were? So he he was a, uh, a patient at this place, and he, and I think he reveals that he was paralyzing himself intentionally. So that gentleman was in a coma initially, and okay. when he came out of the coma... He then came to the realization that something was wrong and he was being drugged with something. Um, But the people around him were being drugged with something much worse, which was causing them to reveal their secrets. And so he was continuing to pretend that he was comatose because of fear of getting blackmailed because he'd seen other people around him being blackmailed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was he was in some like insider trading or cooking yes. the books or something. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Um okay. And they uh, uh Sean and Gus think that he's faking or that they get a tip off that he could possibly be faking. Yes, Lassiter tells him tells them that he that, sees it, yeah, him that he's walking him around. around. Yeah. So then he goes up to him. They go up to him while he's sleeping, um, and they try to tickle him. Yeah. But it's a very – it's a long scene. It's not like <laughs> – It's so long. Yeah, it's not like they go up to him and just tickle him, and it's like – it's a small little – it's a goof, you know, scene where it's you know, funny and whatever. Yeah. It's, it's like a – you have, like, Sean in the guy's ear, like, whispering, saying weird shit, and then you have – and then he's like, Gus, let him have it. And, like, Gus, like – 
just starts like going off on his foot, like tickling it. <laughs> takes his shoe off. He's like making. It's like he's like jerking him yes. off, kind of right. Like that's what the joke is. Yes. Is like, but it's like two minutes or something. <laughs> it's like it's at least it felt that long. <laughs> and finally, the the guy that works there, he's like, "What are you two doing here?" And they just keep what are you doing cutting to this, to this wide shot where Gus's legs are just spread nice and yeah. wide, and he is just going to town on this foot. I I didn't like that scene at all. No. What do you what do you think of the banter between the two? It's too fast. I, it's too fast. I there were times where like this is I didn't find any of it funny, <laughs> but there were times really. I mean, may, maybe once or twice like they do this thing, I don't know if this is a, like an inside joke from the show, but they uh, Sean is constantly making up names for Gus every time they meet a new person. Yeah, and he's always just like, "I'm Sean, and this is my partner Lego Mayo." And it's like, "Oh, okay, uh, that's a that's a name." And then he and then he says th- like three or four more names in that same scene. Yeah, and that's the joke. Um, there were times where like this is like, "Oh, this is kind of funny," I guess. Like I could see this being funny, uh, and the whole show just kind of felt like. It was, you know, it was written back in 2007 or whatever. <laughs> you know, like it, it's, it feels like an old, yeah, TBS show. <laughs> Who cares? But I'm just saying, like, yeah, I didn't. Did you find any of it entertaining at least, or, or was it kind of just all? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I didn't was... appreciate the, yeah. I, the, the nickname like Black Jello, like, uh. What was that reference to? Like, they're that's what they called on. That's what they called Gus on their adult on their uh, uh, dodge adult dodgeball. Ball. Yeah, team. yeah, and like the visual of Jello kind of made me laugh. <laughs> like, like I don't. It's like a. It's funny, but then the black part. I'm like, well, given the current climate in 2020, I don't know if that's as funny. <laughs> But there's something. There might have been something there in 2008, though. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but whatever. I. It's they're obviously very close, and they're able to joke about things like that. So, it's whatever. Um, no one else cares in the show. No. That's happening. Um, but I don't know. Like I said, I thought some of it was pretty funny. Like, kind of um, some of the nicknames. I did not find the the Chewbacca scream. I think that's a. <laughs> That's like a thing, right, from the show? Yeah. That has to be. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so do you want to <laughs> – we can get into that baby scene <laughs> real quick. They – at one point in the movie, they go back. Um, they they go back and they – this is right after like the third sighting of a mysterious man or something. So yeah. Lassie sees a guy bleeding. Um and he, he heads into one of the buildings in the compound and they investigate and they um br- they find some ice chips yeah is that a thing like just to have buckets of ice chips <laughs> laying around at these at these types of facilities i don't know but that's what the drugs are in so hilarious. well yeah at first i was like what at first i was like what the fuck is an ice chip i looked that up and i was like this is it's a candy and but why do they have buckets of it it seems like a very whatever yeah so they they put the drugs in this ice these ice chips and then that's what they use they give ice chips to all of the patients apparently yeah they eat a bunch of ice chips <laughs> they they go back they're in lassie's room just sleeping hanging out eating more ice chips and then this is this is shortly after sean discovers he's he could be having a baby yeah he thinks he's having a baby he's stressing over it yeah he doesn't know what to do they pass out after eating a bunch of ice chips <laughs> they wake up and he gets up and he's like he, sh- he kind of <laughs> strolls over into the hallway because he hears like something making noise out there, person or something, child maybe. <laughs> and he gets out in the hallway and you see a, it's it's a like a, a, a it's small it's it's uh, McPoyle from <laughs> from <laughs> it's always sunny, uh, dresses a in a baby. He's dressed as a baby yeah. in a bouncy. And he's small. He's like a small adult-sized man, shrunken down, and he's just like throwing a tantrum. Yeah. 
and Sean just interacting with him. He interacts with him for like a couple minutes. They sing and together. They, they sing together. Um, there's a bunch of funny <laughs> jokes. Um, and what's interesting about this scene is that Gus eventually wakes up and he comes out and he's at first he's like, well, "Who the fuck are you talking to?" And he says, "The baby." And then Gus sees the baby. Yep. They share a hallucination together, which is fucking crazy. But fine, it's funny enough. But what's more crazy is that immediately after the scene, they spot what's his face, the guy who was in the who was pretending to be yeah, in a coma. comatose, yeah. run down the hallway. They chase him. Gus grabs him and and proceeds to like tackle him and choke him out, thinking he's a merman. Yeah. But Sean does not share this hallucination. <laughs> in fact. He becomes completely sober in this instance and is like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's not a merman. Which which also makes you wonder whether or not Gus in the first place was running after a merman just trying to catch a merman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It um it, it kind of fell apart at that But that's point, I but mean, that's just jokes, baby. That's how they go. But like I like consistency with things. Yeah. I like I like movie logic that makes sense. I like when, like, if you're going to have them share hallucinations, like, wouldn't it be funny for them to share hallucinations around this building? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't, it's just fucking stupid. It's just like they didn't, they were like, it would be funny, like, so and so, like, so and so's friends with the actor who played the baby. It would be funny if he's in there as a baby and we, and we have a joke about that. And it's just like, that's what that scene was. Well, like, he was, he was a character in the show already. Oh, he was? Yeah. But they don't, Oh, he was, a, wait, he, was he was a psychiatrist in the show. Oh, so this was a cameo. So this was of. a cameo. <sighs> okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, I mean it doesn't make sense why they would do that, but I guess it makes it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. So, okay, well there you go. See, maybe I should have watched the show. But like I said, most of my problems with this <laughs> this show are like from not watching the actual show. Yeah. Or understanding who they are as characters or what their abilities are. Lack of abilities. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I mean, this was, you know, I kind of feel like I just watched a long episode of Psych. Yeah. Um, didn't particularly like it. <laughs> it was, um, I don't think this movie really, really is truly satisfying for fans. Um, but I'm sure they got a kick out of it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure some of them really. I'm sure some of them really liked it. I think the while super cheesy at the end of the movie, um, it was overly cheesy in my opinion. With Lassie like getting up to walk and he's crying and like he's like, "Dad, I did it. I, bye, Dad." And uh, I, again, that like that only feels earned through paratext. It it doesn't. It it's not earned in the actual film itself. No, absolutely not. But if you do. Yeah, but if you know what happened to him in real life, it's like, okay, well, that's... Yeah. It makes it feel more important. Yeah. Um, was it, wasn't was there, like, another super sappy scene somewhere? There was two. There was that. That was the big one. Maybe maybe when, he, when Gus got proposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Um, yeah, I don't know. It... it, it like totally it shifts at that point like once the mystery is solved yeah. it's kind of the, it's like now it's like a lifetime movie it's <laughs> super dramatic and like cheesy and yeah but um yeah i don't know what uh is there anything else you that came to that comes to mind that you're just like i needed to get off my chest i needed to talk about this no okay no. i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking weird yeah, I know it was I um I really I picked this because I, I wanted to see what it would be like to watch something at the end of its life, like something that had years and years and years and years of build up. Like what is that like someone coming in who doesn't have the background, like what would it be like? And it turns out it's kind of an awful experience. Um and like they don't even pay off any like it's not like they there's any like through line from the series that they pay off it's just everything's contained within this episode and like it's just i don't know maybe we should watch the other psych movie <laughs> now which i'm very excited for it's time for a little bit of imdb trivia and goofs oh finally after Psych the Movie in 2017, creator Steve Franks indicated that he wanted to make 
five more psych movies. <laughs> oh. Wait, he wanted five more after y- the After psych the movie? first one, yeah. So there's four more. Yeah. Oh my god. Richard Schiff plays a character named Dr. Emil Hirsch, a nod to actor Emil Hirsch. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first Psych episode slash movie to not premiere on USA Network. (laughs) Characters welcome, I'm sorry. Alright, now for some goofs. When Gus is de-petaling the roses, his progress changes between shots. Oh, dude, we forgot about the... His phone, dude. His phone glitching. <laughs> the dog's name on his bowl is Morrissey with two S's, but spelled Morrissey with only one S on his name tag. Okay, so the dog's name is Morrissey. Morrissey. Okay. But his phone was glitching, Max. Yeah. That is that is such that is something that a a writer or a team of writers would put into a show in two thousand five. <laughs> when like when, like, phones were still kind of, like, new and, like, people didn't really know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, his phone was, like, glitching the entire time, and he was, like, tweeting dick pics when he took the picture of the dick. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guy's dick in the bathroom. Yeah, that is that is a 2006 joke. Like, it's not, it doesn't make any sense today. Yeah. In 2020. Um, I can't believe I forgot that. I did that in, all, in bold. I said, talk about the phone. <laughs> God damn it. Um, Next week, we're going to be doing Fred 3, baby. 